building a sure foundation for answered prayers. Building a sure foundation for answered prayers. And I'd like to begin by reminding us that the whole essence of prayer is to have answers. There is no need to pray if there will be no answers. The whole essence of prayer is to have answers. Number two is to know that God is a prayer answering God. O thou that hearest prayers, unto you shall all flesh come. We serve a prayer answering God. But the Bible tells us that if the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing the righteous can do. Psalm chapter 11 and verse 3. So the whole essence of prayer is to have answers. Yes. We serve a prayer answering God. Yes. But there are things that must be in place for prayers to be answered. If the foundation for securing answers to our prayer is out of place, then we cannot get answers to our prayers. And so the big question that we want to answer tonight is, what is the foundation for answered prayers? And the answer to that question is the burning love of God in our hearts. The love of God burning in our hearts. The love of God burning in our hearts. Everything that works in the kingdom, including answers to prayers, works by love. Everything that works in the kingdom, including answers to prayer, works by love. Romans 8 and verse 28, it said, And we know that all things, all things, not some things, not a few things, not one thing, all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. All things. All things. For example, Faith, without which you cannot have answers to your prayers, work it by love. Throughout last week, we emphasized the role of faith in securing answers to our prayers. In James chapter 1, you read from verse 5, where it talks about, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth liberally to all men, and obraded not, and it shall be given to him. But let this man, <laughs> let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like the wave of the sea that is driven with the wind and tossed. Let not this man who is doubting or who is a doubter or who is wavering like the wave of the sea, let not this man think that he shall receive anything, not some things. He would get nothing if his faith is not in place. But in Galatians 5, verse 26, we are told that this faith walketh by love. Faith walketh by love. Galatians 5, 6, sorry. Galatians 5, 6. Faith which walketh by love. Therefore, our passion for Christ and the interest of his kingdom is what determines the answers to our prayers. For example, in John 15 and verse 16, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, that you should go forth and bear fruits, and that your fruit should abide, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, that he may give it to you. John 15, 16. So what is the connection between soul winning, fruit bearing, and answers to prayers? Passion. 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 The love for God. The love for the matters of his kingdom. Passion. Passion. We look at the example of Abraham tonight. 
Abraham demonstrated his passion for God by prompt obedience to whatever God said to him. He demonstrated his passion for God by prompt obedience to whatever instructions he received from God. In Genesis 12, from verse 1 to 4, God visited Abraham in his father's house and said to him, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. And now in this land I will make you great. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and I will cause them that curse you, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now verse 4, so Abraham departed. In obedience to his instruction, he departed. He departed. In obedience to his instruction. At another time, God said to him in, John, uh, sorry, in Genesis chapter 17, beginning from verse 5 all through to 23, circumcise every male born in your house. I want to enter into a covenant with you, but circumcise every male born in your house. As soon as God left speaking to Abraham, Abraham took a knife. And began with himself. Do you know what it means for a 90-year-old man to be circumcised? The reason why they circumcise babies is because uh, they can't, um, uh, they don't understand the severity of pain yet. That is why they circumcise babies before they attain a certain age. In fact, within the first few weeks or thereabouts, the babies are circumcised. Why? Because they cannot actually place the literal meaning of pain. Now, imagine a 90-year-old man who understands pain. Now took a knife. Circumcision is the cutting off of the foreskin. Cut off the foreskin and then sat down to circumcise other persons. Hello. In Genesis chapter 14, we are told that Abraham had 318 servants who could bear arms. Not the total number of his servants, the ones who could go to war, the ones who knew how to wear the sword, the ones who knew how to fight. He had an army of about 318. Now, that is the army. We are not talking about other servants. Hello. Is every Nigerian in the army? So it means that the Nigerian army does not make up the total population of Nigeria. How many of us understand that? So also, those servants who went to war with Abraham, they don't make up the total number of Abraham's servants. But we know that there are 318 of them. Now, imagine if Abraham circumcised only the 318. Having circumcised himself first. I'm not sure they were paying at that time. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, the instruction of God didn't stop there. God said, every male born plus the servant and if they have any male child, you circumcise the child too. And Abraham sat down and did all of that. Why? His heart for God. His heart for God. There was no instruction God gave Abraham that was too hard for Abraham to obey. Why is it that Abraham wasn't struggling with his instruction? His heart for God. He loved God too much not to obey God. And the Bible tells us that he that, who is he that loves me? He that has my commandment and keepeth them. John 14, 21. He that has my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. And one of the ways that he manifests himself to us is before you call, I will answer. While you are yet speaking, I will perform. Our heart for God is what draws or endears God to us. And that covers us or secures our answers in the place of prayer. And we saw Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, how he was able to engage God in intercession. God didn't respond to Abraham's intercession the next day. Abraham secured instant answers. 
as he was asking God questions, God was giving him answers instantly. Hello. If you find 50, will you slay them? The righteous and the wicked? God said, no. If I find 50, I will not. He said, okay, don't be angry. Oh. If you find 40, will you slay them? No. If I find 40, I will not. It's okay. Let not God be angry. Let me ask this one time. He continued to engage with God until he got to 10. Our heart for God is what endears God to us. It's just like it is in a family. When a parent truly loves a child, when a child truly does things that pleases the parents, he doesn't struggle to get things from the parents, true or false. True or false. So it is also with the believer in the place of prayer. I want to trust God tonight that in the midst of this fasting and prayer season, the love of God shall be keen to the fresh in our hearts. Yes. That the love of God burning in our hearts shall burn in stronger dimension, yes. shall burn with stronger intensity. Yes. Now you are going to pray that prayer. I've heard the chancellor say, you can read all my books, you can preach all my messages, but you don't know my secret until you know my heart beat for God. My secret is I am a lover of God. I am a die-hard lover of God. I've had him say before, if you touch anything that belongs to me, I can let you go and not bother myself. But if you touch anything that God put in my care, I will pursue you to any place. Why? My heart for God. Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, ignite a fresh fire. Let your love in my heart burn with greater intensity. Let your love be palpable. I want to love you more. There are things you and I will no more struggle to get if our heart for God can just hit <laughs> a dimension. Rise up on your feet. How many of us truly really understand everything we have said tonight? Lord, I want a fresh baptism. Go ahead and pray. I want a fresh baptism. 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 The love of God is shared abroad by the Holy Ghost in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. Raise your hand to heaven. Father, upon us all tonight, Pour out your spirit of love afresh. Yeah. Come on, let me hear you say louder, amen. Yeah. Upon everyone present here tonight, by the Holy Ghost, ignite a fresh fire of love in our hearts. Yeah. Let your love in our heart burn with greater intensity. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Empower each one here to live a life of delightsome obedience. Amen. Prompt obedience. Amen. Thank you, Father. To you be all of the glory. Now, our Father, in this brief moment, we want to celebrate your faithfulness. Thanking you for your good hand upon each one of us before and since the commencement of this test two week. And this is the confidence that we have, that as we celebrate your faithfulness, you will yet do greater things in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So the next three, four, five minutes, let's celebrate it. How many of us truly want to praise God? Now, we are not praising God as a result of what we have seen. We are praising God for who he is. Hello. 
When you praise God for who he is, God will prove who he is to you. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So dance your dances if you can. And sing from the depth of your heart. In the name of Jesus, this test too, God will surprise you. I said God will surprise you. Yeah.